Well, he's just 26 years old. And last year, he broke into the top 20 in the world golf rankings. Australian Aaron Badley also led US, uh, last year's U.S. Open before losing in the last round to Tiger Woods. Recently, reporter Will Dawson talked with Aaron about the time he almost gave up on golf. In a land known for its kangaroos, koalas, and crocodiles, one of Australia's own is collecting quite a trophy case. Aaron Baddeley began playing golf at age eight. By age 14, he won the local club championship. I sort of progressed quickly but my passion was always to play as a professional. In 1999, Aaron won the Australian Open as an 18-year-old amateur and again the following year as a professional. Although he had given his life to Christ at age 12, spending more time on the golf course meant spending less time at church. I started playing golf, so I wasn't able to attend, always attend on Sundays because of golf. My focus was golf. I wanted to be the best player, best player in the world. I wanted to be on, on the US tour. I wanted to win golf tournaments and he continued doing so. Aaron crossed the pond to the United States and entered the PGA Tour. And while his dream had come true, it still wasn't everything he had imagined. I was definitely wrapped up in uh, material things, trying to find someone to date, you name it, fame, being in the right place. I mean, I was definitely heading in the wrong direction. I'm thinking this is gonna be the best year of my life and end up being the worst. In November 99, I won this train open by September 2000. I told my dad I wanted to quit golf. Everything was going <laughs> bad, you know. I wasn't. I was missing cuts. I was playing bad. I was homesick. Um, yeah, everything was in my what I thought was just the worst thing ever. It was because I, I didn't never grew my relationship with the Lord. I just called myself a Christian. Someone once said golf is a game of inches. So much mental preparation and focus is required to succeed. So when Aaron began playing not up to par, he began to refocus his attention on God. And that was, that was a turning point in my life. Instead of focusing on goal, focusing on going out and dating someone, I was focusing on spending time with the Lord, uh, studying His Word, and it was uh, my obedience that really changed my life. How was your perspective on golf changed with Christ in the driver's seat. I still want to win. Um, my drive to win is probably even just as much or more now than what it was back before because I know now that when I play well, when I do th well, when I, when I win, that I get that opportunity to, to tell people about Jesus. Today, Aaron is married to his best friend, Rochelle. He really led me to Rochelle and yeah, I mean, she's just awesome. I mean, she's really been a blessing in my life and really helped me to be, more, I think, more, more rounded, more, more balanced as well. So, yeah, she's special. And through his relationship with his wife, Aaron says he better understands God's unconditional love for us. One of the things really sort of brought out was like just how important the relationship with him is. It's not about like the rules and doing stuff. It's about actually the relationship like, with my wife for sure. Like, there's, I know there's things that I, don't, I would never do because it's going to hurt her. And it's exactly the same with the Lord. Like, you just don't do it because you know it's going to hurt Him. And it's about a relationship. It's not about don't do this, don't do that. It's about actually communing with the Lord and spending time with Him. Aaron says he no longer plays golf for himself and admits he has an even bigger responsibility. I play golf not for my glory, which I used to do. I play golf for, so I can give glory to the Lord because I'm giving 100% every time I go out. I'm not playing, I'm playing so I can tell people about Jesus. I've really seen how God's so changed my heart, my passions, my desires. It's really, really cool how like it's, and it wasn't like an overnight shebang thing. It was a step by step, day by day, walking with Him. And through that, He's really changed who I am it's now. I mean, I couldn't imagine life without him. What is your passion? What's number one in your life? The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Is it in money? Is it in pleasure? Uh, is it in members of the opposite sex? Uh, 
Well, what, what is it? Is it social status? What, what is your passion? Well, in the life of most golfers, professional golfer, went in golf, hitting, hitting good balls, getting in the fairway, getting your ball in the cup, scoring low, winning, 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 staying on tour, making the cut, whatever it is. Professional, the same thing. But those who really made it are like Aaron Badley. They've learned what's really important is the time you spend with God. And God Almighty is calling to you today, and He's saying, come home, come home. Son, daughter, I love you. Come home. I forgive you. I'm going to walk with you. I'll work with you. I'll teach you wonderful things. Come home. And this is the time to say yes to the Lord. So before we go any farther, I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Let your priorities be right. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. But the other things will not enrich your life. There's pleasure in some of that stuff for a short time, sure. But the real happiness comes in Jesus. And if you want to know Him, if you want to know true happiness, if you want to know that if you die, you're going to spend eternity with Him, I want you to do something. I want you to bow your head wherever you are. Don't go anywhere. Just right now. Bow your head and pray a simple prayer with me and pray these words. Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know you as I should. But I believe, Lord, that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. And I believe that you rose again, that I might live forever. And so right now, Jesus, I turn away from selfishness, self-seeking, and all the things that I have looked for in my life. <clears throat> and I turn to you. And I give you my life. I give you my career. I give you everything. I turn it over to you, Lord. And I receive you at this moment as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Live your life in me. <clears throat> and I will live for you. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, that you've heard my prayer. And thank you, Lord, that you've come into my heart. Now, if you prayed with me, I have something I want to give you. <clears throat> it's called a higher calling. I've got a 73-minute CD in here that tells you about what do you do next. The exchange life. You've been born again. You've just prayed and you've given your heart to the Lord. What do you do next? What about sin? What about confession? What about church? What about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What about the second coming of Jesus? It's all in here. Also, a book a booklet of scriptures that you know, elaborates on this teaching. We'll give this to you free if you just call us and say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. I want that little booklet, A Higher Calling. Pick up the telephone right now. It's a toll-free number. It won't cost you anything. 1-800-759-0700. The angels of heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. 1-800-759-0700. 